Okay. In this video, I want to dispel some of the myths regarding ex libre development. Most notably, that the Enrico uh, Paykal commits are of low quality. Like here, we have a I suppose it's a Red Hat employee saying becoming increasingly obvious that the merge requests were untested and breaking things. Okay, so he reverted a bunch of stuff from Enrico. Um, let's actually see that. Yeah, all of these reverts uh, will make it seem like uh, these were of bad quality commits. But here's the thing. If we look at the master, all the commits in the, in the master branch since the latest um, merge point, I'm going to explain what is that later. Let's see all of the reverts. So there's a ton of reverts, and most of these have nothing to do with Enrico. Let's see one of these. Um, remove flip pixels. Okay, so if we look at this commit, The original commit was this one, Adam Jackson at redhat.com. So what happened there? Did he not test this commit? Why did they have to revert it? It turns out reverting commits is common because nobody can test in all different scenarios. So for example here, Recently, this is in, in the Linux kernel, they found a regression in one of the latest um, features, Futex private hash, and they just marked it as, as broken. Marked broken for performance reasons, give us one more cycle to sort things out. So this cycle is marked as broken, so people don't use it, and they are going to try to fix it the next release. So this is effectively reverting um, the changes that enable the, this feature. It's another example that I often use to, to show uh, how um, good, de good development practices. Oh, actually, the person involved is from Red Hat. So this is in the Linux kernel. This guy made a commit. I, uh, there was a release candidate, I tested it with Wine, I found the regression, I reported the regression, and Linux Torvald says, let's revert the change. That's exactly what we should do. Like, does that mean that this guy, Oleg Nesterov, is a bad developer and he didn't test his patch properly? No, he just didn't test in Wine his changes. That's That's it. But uh, the patch is reverted, no problem. Now, here in Xorg, let's let's see uh, the stable branch because if I if I check uh, Xorg server, the version of of the server that I'm using is twenty one dot one dot eighteen. Here, this is the tag 21.1.18. So if I if I show all of the commits from the base point to that uh, tag, these are all the changes. Now let's grab for revert. 
and look at that there have been some reverts let's look at this one xdg seed so this commit was applied in uh, 2021 and it was reverted in 2022 this is in the stable branch where uh, things are supposed to be checked and double checked and these changes are supposed to be beneficial to the user they still make reverts so the fact that, that they reverted some of Enrico's changes is not indicative of anything so that's one part but the second part uh, of that I want to show is how exactly the development happens so let's see, see the difference between the master branch and this tag which is part of the stable branch Okay, this is not, yeah, this is not easy to visualize, so here is a more uh, graphical way of looking at, at, at the branches. So there's a lot, a lot of changes, and it's it may not be easy to see, but this is the point where the two branches diverge. So this side is a stable branch. All of these are stable um, tags. And this is the latest one. And then this other side is the stable, is the master branch, sorry. And there are many, many, many more commits. This is not the only two important branches, but let's uh, not overwhelm ourselves so the way th this kind of uh, development is similar to the Linux kernel where what they do uh, let's screw it up is for example this is the first patch fix leak in Glamour build program. This is applied in the master branch and then also in the stable branch. Fix leak in Glamour build program, except this one is cherry picked from the other commit. So every commit in the stable branch has to come from the master branch. That way, um, when they make a switch to the master branch uh, for it will be like 21.2 no commit is missing okay yes that's fine that's not there's nothing wrong with that but here is the problem the last uh, minor release was 21.1 that was on that was on 2021 October 2021 since then there hasn't been any not even major release minor release so all of these patches have been a, a, in the master branch have been accumulating for f almost four years now But is there anything useful here? Like maybe you think like oh, if there was anything useful, it would be released in the stable branch. Well, let's see. So to properly visualize the delta between the stable branch and the master branch, I recreated 
the whole thing. Removing all the reverts and making sure, like, um, from the base to stable. Like, this is a recreation of the stable branch, removing all the unnecessary reverts. And this is a recreation of the master branch, doing the same thing. So here, we have a very few reverts because this, the original patches of this came before uh, the fork between uh, from stable and master. Okay, and then. The commits are reorganized. So all of these commits at the, at the beginning, they are part of the, of the stable branch. And the later commits are not. To better visualize that, let's, let's add this other branch. It's uh, hard to see, but okay. So this is the last commit that is part of both branches. Then it diverges. All of this Wayland, gla Glamour, Ephir, all of this stuff is only part of the of the master branch. This can be further cleaned up, but. You can see there's a lot of Wayland patches. Those are not part of the um, stable releases. I mean, they are in another branch, but anyway. So there's a lot of, lot of stuff. Now, to see only the delta, this is the command. So it's, it's still a lot of stuff it will be really difficult to go one by one to see if there's anything useful. But mm, drivers, this one is important. This is the mode setting driver. This is the the modern driver that is equivalent to what Wayland compositors do. So all of these changes are inter in, in interesting for most users. And here is the one that I want to focus on. Uh, no, not this one. Add support for tear-free page flips. Because there's a myth that that tearing is only fixing, fixed in, in, in Wayland. I have a, another video where I dispel that myth. There's many options to get rid of tearing. But this is another option. Enable tear free. And here's the patch. Here's the patch for the mode setting driver, which is the recommended driver for pretty much everyone. And here's the option to add a tear free. This was this was submitted in 2022. Why is it not released to the public? I mean, I think we all can speculate what's the reason, but and that's not. This is not even all of the. Uh, interesting stuff. There's more tear free stuff here. There's accurate presentation, timing. Uh, recalculate clock and refresh rate. There's some uh, fixes for variable refresh, refresh rate. A lot of stuff that is that users might want to have. 
why is this not present in any release? This is just the mode setting driver. There's a lot more stuff. Documentation updates, cleanups, uh, build improvements. What about all this stuff? None of this is part of the stable releases. This has nothing to do with, with Enrico. We can actually see a short log. Thank Yes, there's 700 patches from Enrico, and note these are the ones that have not been reverted. But there's a, there's uh, a lot of other people: Peter, Hutterer, Constantine, Sultan, also Waf, Jeremy Huddleston, Simon Sir. What about all of these patches from all of these people? They're just gathering dust. I think it's pretty clear why that is happening, but everyone can make up their own mind. The thing is that if you use Ex Libre, you get all of these patches and, a th and more than a thousand patches more on top of that. Actually, um, Let's see. Yeah. This is just one month of development. These are all the contributions specific to X Libre. So yeah, that's it. There's a ton of people say like oh X, X Libre uh, sorry XORG it's a dead project. There's a lot of changes that have been happening for four years that for some reason XORG developers don't want in any official release. That's it.